Fire. There are two things in life. Things you need and things you want. Camping eliminates the wants and leaves you with just the needs. Food, water, and shelter. Having all the needs met and the wants eliminated allows our body and mind to truly relax. Being relaxed helps with stress and anxiety. It allows me to think more clearly without having emotion get in the way. This trip was well needed, and even though I'd never done a solo trip, nothing was gonna stop me from going. Without further ado, here's my story. I'm an average camper. I place myself in the middle of cabin camping and bushcraft survival. And I was quite nervous about my first solo experience. So I chose a location I'd been to before with friends. I rolled up to the site and I carried out my usual routine. Step one, set up the tent. Step two, set up sleeping bag and sleeping arrangement. It's important to have all this set up so you're not fumbling around with it in the dark. It also gives your sleeping bag a chance to loft up. Step three, collect firewood. I was fortunate enough that someone left logs at the site, so I just needed to split them down. I was planning on having a small fire, so I didn't need that much wood. I wandered down an ATV trail looking for some downed trees, scored a few good ones, and walked back to camp. I ended up cutting them up to a perfect size. Step 4. Make the fire. I'm no expert at fire building, as you can tell I'm still making TP fires. I saw a trick where you can use cattail fluff as tinder to start a fire. As you guys can tell, this was a huge fail. But some good old birch bark and a match solved that problem. If someone knows how to use cattails as tinder, let me know in the comment section below. After these four steps, I was sitting around the campfire and relaxation had begun. Don't forget to always get your flashlight out and your headlamp out before night falls. That way you're not fumbling around for these things in the dark. What's your go-to comfort meal while camping? Mine's chicken and pasta. Luckily I was the chef of the evening and it was on the menu. I really like my Primus Classic trail stove, but it's not the best when you're trying to cook two different things at once. I ended up cooking the chicken, then letting it sit for a while while I boiled up the pasta. Then I had to reheat the chicken before mixing it all together. This was quite a time consuming process. It was well worth it though, a great dinner always helps put me to sleep. With a full belly, I relaxed for an hour or so before hitting the hay. I was all settled in by about 10 p.m. For whatever reason, I didn't end up filming much the second day. By 11ish, I was on the water and ready to fish. It was windy. I ended up having a little bit of luck with the perch, although it was kind of a pain because after every cast I had to reposition the kayak. The wind would just keep blowing me right up to shore. Around 4pm I puddled back and packed up the yak. Last but not least I used my water filter to grab some fresh water for the trip home. This trip was well needed and a great success. Whether on the water or by the fire, I had tons of time to think. I challenge each and every one of you to get outdoors and enjoy nature, even if it's just a 30 minute walk. 
Leave out all the wants and take only the needs, just the necessities, and experience what nature has to offer. I can't touch the chicken. If I get the raw chicken juice on my hands. I have to run really quickly to the water. Maybe that's what I'll have to do. We'll take this off. So really quick to burn the evidence. Just inhale smoke. Got the dish soap, a little squirtity squirt, and jog down to the fire. A little water. That's one of the big disadvantages about camping alone. It's you're doing everything yourself. Then again, you can camp with someone, you're still doing everything yourself. I'm back. Put that chicken back on.